What's up guys? Finally, as promised, suspension explained. But first, I've got a couple things to talk about, about three. Number one is I finally got my buddy Kevin to come be on the channel. He's here working all the time. He's like that car guy that just knows the answer to everything, so that'll be a huge help. And then second, his idea, finish the piranha. Now it's been sitting there nearly done for a long time, but I moved on. I wanted to do my own thing. He's gonna finish the piranha while I finish the cross cart. That should only take like three days though and then we'll have some content to shoot and two friends to run around with. And then three, I know you see this purple tank over here. That's the new dirt car. We found that super cheap. It needs to be put back together, it needs an engine, it needs a lot of work, but we're gonna do it. It's a circle track car and neither of us have ever raced before and we've both always wanted to, so that's gonna be really cool. I had to explain it because you're gonna see it all the time. But, as promised, let's explain some suspension. Look at that, man. It looks so good. It's sitting on its own back wheels right now. It's resting up front, but it's sitting at about five and three quarter inches ride height with no weight. So with the engine and a rider, it should sit down to about uh, five inches and that'll be the perfect ride height. So let's get a little closer in there and go check out some suspension. So I'm not sure how to really format this video, so I'm just gonna start by jumping on it. As you saw, that was a very scientific test of the shocks, which are actually really stiff. So that'll be good once I build a sway bar. This thing is gonna hook up really, really hard. Now I'll show you how I built that three link suspension and what the idea was behind it. So this setup here is a three link suspension. I don't know what to call this guy. I always call it a trailing arm. Not sure if that's what it is, but this is my third setup. So I have number one there, which was also a three link, but it didn't work out and I'll show you why. And number two there was a single swing arm or a single control arm rather, which would have worked fine, but the geometry has to be perfect from the beginning and it wasn't. So I like this one here because you have adjustments through all the heim joints and I can get everything dialed in and then figure out what's the best way to make this thing work. Now, why the first one didn't work was because I decided to use this Miata axle which is terrible for this setup. It's uh, not made for a lot of travel and you get a lot of plunge in that joint, right? And there's only about an inch and a half of travel for that CV to move forward and back. And this is what I mean by plunge. So the axle has so much to move here in the end through this cup. As you can see, this has only got about an inch and a half of plunge and on some better axles, you'll have plunge on both sides. So you have even more plunge, you have even more room for that axle itself to uh, float back and forth. Because when this suspension goes through travel, this will actually move through the cup, forward or backwards. Now with mine, it doesn't move very much. And that's because of the geometry of this rear end, because of where I've mounted everything. So as you can see here, that bottom mounting point is not all the way at the bottom of the chassis as you would normally see, and that's because of the plunge issue with that uh, Miata axle. And then you'll notice it's actually centered around uh, that axle, or almost centered. And then that forward mounting point there is at about five and a half inches up which is uh, right about in line with the center of that axle. So to explain it a little bit better, I've built a real quick visual representation here. So this one is the axle, and then these are your two arms. And then on this side, we have the spindle, and I've marked a couple lines on the axle. So let me put that back together. And then you can see with everything centered, this axle is centered between the two, the upper and lower arms. 
we don't get too much movement away from that real thick line. But then I'm gonna go ahead and move my axle really far up or really far down and show you how it goes. Now this setup, as weird as it looks here, is what you would uh, expect to actually see on the buggy. So the axle is actually a lot higher. It's closer to the upper arm and then this would be mounted at the bottom of the chassis. And then on this side, uh, you can see what's going on. So now you can see two lines right here. And then as we go through travel, you can see how much plunge I'm getting there. And now we're at, I don't know, maybe another, an extra inch of plunge there. And that wouldn't be on this side, it would be on that side where that axle cup is. And now it just ran in to the, uh, to the back of that cup, limiting my travel and probably breaking my axles. So then when we go back to this centered axle style, like I've got on the buggy now, you can see why it actually works with that short amount of plunge in my Miata axle because we're floating right there on that, that thick line and it's not moving. So you don't have to set this up the same way I set mine up. You just have to take all the factors into account. How much plunge you have in your axle, right? How much travel you have through there. And then how high you're actually mounting that axle in the center over there. And that's usually going to be dictated by how big your sprocket is. Because you don't want your sprocket poking out down underneath your frame, which would then make it crash into the ground when you, you know, hit a jump or something. So there is a lot to take into account here, and it is going to take some trial and error. But it's certainly worth the trial and error. You know, it's, it's worth it to build a new one instead of stick with a crappy one, right? because you, you want the best performing buggy possible. Now, let's move in here and check out the rear end real quick. You can see I've got a turnbuckle here, and that is my, that's gonna be my chain tensioner. So what this is going to do is allow me, let me take this out, it's going to allow me to rotate this whole rear end forward and backwards to tension my chain but it'll also allow me to put a bigger sprocket on here when I put on the bigger tires so I still have the same acceleration. So I've built it a little higher up so I can use anywhere from a, you know, say a 44 tooth rear sprocket to a 55 tooth rear sprocket. And still have ground clearance without that sprocket sticking out below the buggy. Another thing you'll want to think about when designing your rear end here is uh, camber and toe changes. You don't have to worry too much about caster or scrub radius, but your camber and toe are going to be crucial. So mine is fully adjustable through these two, these two, and then the front inboard heim joint. So if I wanted to change my toe where the front of my wheel is pointed, I would pull that front heim joint in or out, and then these heim joints in or out until I get my camber and my toe correct. So the, so the cart will drive in a straight line, basically. It's a lot of money in heim joints that I've got here, but I need to do it that way until I figure out the perfect setup for the rear of the suspension. Once I do that, I can eliminate some of these and then another crucial thing is going to be your shocks. It's an expensive part. It's one of the more expensive parts of the buggy. It's probably gonna cost you as much as your engine is, but it's very important for how well this thing rides. These are five inch uh, Fox emulsion shocks with 12 inch springs. They're 100 pounds per inch. So every 100 pounds is gonna compress it one more inch right and I had a company called AccuTune off-road I gave them all my suspension geometry and they revalved the shocks and then gave me the springs that should work perfectly for this thing it did cost me about 1300 bucks maybe 1400 altogether but 
it will certainly be worth it if you want a well handling vehicle. And lastly, possibly, I'm not sure, is all the hardware and tube that you use here. Now I've used inch and a quarter 095 for all of the uh, tube down here and then I've used hardened chromoly heim joints. You don't want to cheap out on the heim joints. And then with your tubes, if you can see this spot here, I've welded in the uh, threaded inserts for the heim joints and then I drilled out spots on the sides of this tube so I could plug weld so those inserts are very strong and that's not going to be a weak point there. These are 5 eighths inch heim joints here in the rear since there's so many of them and then the single one in the front is a 3 quarter inch heim joint. I'm pretty sure that should all be strong enough but we will see through all the uh, abuse I put this thing through. And I do believe that that's all I've got for this. I will find out what's wrong with it and what's right with it when I start taking it out. But for now, that's what I've got. So I hope this video helped you guys. I spent a lot of time researching all this stuff to try to figure out how to build the best suspension. And I'm sure I haven't built it yet, but it's coming, I promise you. If you liked everything, please be sure to hit all the buttons. And then uh, if you have any questions, my Instagram link is always in the description or comment section below. Keep coming back. You already know it. Thanks.